What's new this month at Rogers Railroad Junction? It's an all Athern show this time round, with a little bit of Walther's thrown in as well. Starting off slowly with Genesis Jeep 7s. As the first hood units ever built by General Motors, GP 7s were an obvious landmark in the evolution of locomotive design. Boasting 1500 horsepower from its reliable 567 series engine block, the venerable Jeep 7 paved the way for EMD dominance of the locomotive market that would last more than 50 years. Built with road-specific details such as varying horn placement, winterized hatches and all-weather windows, full end detail, working Mars light and emergency beacon, and a Tsunami 2 Soundtracks digital control system. Then there's the UP Steam Program with Challenger types in Overland Gray. Often mistakenly referred to as Malays or Mallies, the Union Pacific 3900 class got its start as yet another manifestation of the bigger is better philosophy that management in Omaha spent so many years being particularly obsessed with. Weighing in at over 500 tons and boasting more than 97,000 pounds of tractive effort, even these behemoths proved too small for Big Yellow's oversized ambitions, however, and were eventually supplanted by the even more gargantuan Big Boy type locomotives. Pretty much covered in detail elements, individually sprung drivers, directional LED lighting, illuminated number boards, a five-pole skew-wound motor, and dual articulation are all standard features, as is an ESU lock sound decoder. And that's followed by a turn back to diesel power with SD70 Aces. Built with the B1B axle configuration and the non-radial HTSC trucks that the Ace is so known for, these models feature the step corner nose that makes these units so recognizable, as well as full MU connections, photo etched grill work, wire handrails, and a Tsunami Soundtracks decoder. In the prototype realm, newer versions of this model feature EMD's all-new 4-stroke 1010 series engine block with two-stage turbocharging, offering one-of-a-kind Tier 4 emission standards compliance. At last, something that the tree huggers can't complain about. Turning to rolling stock, we've got 60-foot Berwick boxcars in the ready-to-roll line. Emerging in the 1970s, just as the per diem boxcar boom was gaining steam, Berwick Forge and Fabrication made its name building cheap and reliable boxcars of varying dimensions and quickly positioned itself as one of the predominant car builders of the modern era. With metal mesh crossover platforms, cut levers, freestanding ladders, and oversized height stripes where applicable, these simple yet ubiquitous cars will fit in on any modern layout. And that's followed up by 50-foot Pullman standard box cars. Built by Pullman with full insulation throughout, these cars commonly carried canned goods and other products that were deemed temperature sensitive, if not entirely perishable. And then there's 60-foot arch roof passenger cars. Often referred to as Harriman cars, round-top coaches like these bridge the gap between turn-of-the-century heavyweight cars 
and streamliners of the 1930s. Available in baggage, coach, combine, diner, railway post office, and observation configurations. All ready-to-roll products feature metal wheels, knuckle couplers, and optimized weighting. And finally this month, because we can't let Athern have all the fun, we're giving it wings with Jordan Spreaders from Walters. Most commonly associated with snow fighting duties in higher elevations, these versatile machines actually serve many purposes along the right-of-way, from ditching to debris clearing to spreading ballast and checking clearances. Available in multiple road names and featuring many road-specific details, Fully articulated and deployable wings are a standout feature, along with prototypical placement of steps, air reservoirs, headlights, and horns. Weather it up with some grime and a few rust streak decals, and you've got a sidetrack scene that will add a touch of realism to any layout. But what else would you expect from Northern California's premier railroad hobby shop? So drop on by and see what else is new at Rogers Railroad Junction today.